Hey guys, welcome to part three of my easy step-by-step -step guide to 3D resin printing. Today we're going to be looking at screen resolution and I probably get more questions about this than any other subject. 2K, 4K, 6K, 8K or whatever. What does it all mean? And what's all this XY micron business? Before I start, I just want to give a quick thanks to those that have hit the YouTube thanks button, making very thoughtful donations of appreciation. And also, of course, to my patrons, without who I simply wouldn't be able to run this channel. When it comes to resolution, 2K, 4K, 6K, etc., the chances are this is nothing new and is most likely something you've already experienced. TVs, cell phones, cameras or tablets, they've all been shouting about improved screen resolution for years. Most people understand the concept of pixels, especially in relation to the devices I've just mentioned. Pixels are tiny areas of illumination, which, when activated in controlled patterns, form images that we recognize. In a given area, the more pixels there are, the clearer and sharper the image becomes. And that's exactly what happens with your TV or phone. So higher resolution here can be thought of as more pixels being squeezed into the same size screen. The density of pixels is often measured in PPI, or pixels per square inch. And higher numbers mean greater density and finer, sharper images. However, Whilst this is a useful concept, this information is not always provided by printer companies. What is available for resin printers is typically numbers like 2K, 4K, 8K, etc. K stands for 1000. So 2K is 2000, 4K is 4000, etc. And these numbers relate to pixels. So, a 4K printer has 4,000 pixels. An 8K printer has 8,000 pixels. And when I say has, it relates to this longer length of the screen. If we look at the Elegu Mars Pro, which you saw me set up in the last video, its screen displays 4,098 pixels across this longer edge of its screen, which is commonly called the X axis. When we round down this number to the nearest thousand, it gives us 4000 or 4K. And sure enough, the Mars 3 Pro is a 4K printer. Of course, the screen also has a shorter side or width, and this is usually called the Y axis. And this holds 2560 pixels. But let's be honest, that doesn't sound as impressive. So marketing gurus spout the bigger number and congratulate themselves on a job well done. So more pixels in a given area means more detail. And if a printer says 4K, it must have loads of pixels and consequently must print in much finer detail, right? Unfortunately, no. Remember what I said about pixels per inch? Well, that defines sharper details in a way we can easily understand. And as such, it's rarely shown. The K number or screen resolution, as it is often referred to, merely tells us how many pixels fit within this longer X axis of the screen. I understand this sounds confusing as I've tried to explain it dozens of times to viewers. So let's look at an example. We'll use the Elico Saturn just because we've already used the Elegoo Mars. The Saturn is a much bigger printer than the Mars, designed to print bigger models. As such, it has a bigger build plate, a bigger resin tray, and of course, a bigger screen. Now the Saturn is happy to advertise itself as a 4K printer, so it must print equally as well as the Mars, right? Well, no, not really. The much bigger screen of the Saturn has an X-axis measuring 3,840 pixels, which, rounding up to the nearest thousand, makes it a 4K printer, just like the Mars 3 Pro. But 
the Saturn has 4000 pixels over a much longer area. Think again in terms of pixels per inch. It cannot print fine details as well because it has a lower PPI, as my maths here should show. Calculating the PPI of a digital screen is accomplished by dividing its diagonal pixel value by its diagonal measurement in inches. Now, I don't have the exact dimensions of these screens, but thanks to most slicer software, I do have accurate data for the build plates. And whilst this won't be exact, it's good enough for what we're doing here. And if you're not a big fan of Pythagoras theorem, don't worry, I've got you covered as I'll explain in a moment. But for now, you can hopefully see that even though both screens are 4K, there's a marked difference in PPI. And a higher PPI means better, finer display, or in our case, better, finer printing. So this knowledge is very useful to have, which is probably why most companies don't provide it. A more increasingly common unit of comparison is XY resolution, measured in microns. Now, we know that X is the long edge of the screen, and Y is its shorter width. What the XY resolution does is combine the number of pixels on an axis with its physical metric measurement, and through a little maths, achieves an XY resolution. Here, I've applied the calculation to the Mars 3 Pro, and sure enough, this gives us a value of 35 microns, where a micron is one thousandth of a meter, also known as a micrometer, though micron is more common. And yes, the Mars 3 Pro tells us that it has an XY resolution of 35 microns. So let's compare once again using the data from the Saturn. And yes, 50 microns. In the case of XY resolution, the smaller the number, the finer the print. Unlike pixels per inch, where a higher number would mean finer print. Hence, lots of confused and misinformed potential customers. Unwittingly pliable for clever sounding sales techniques. But hopefully for you, that will not apply. You now know that a K resolution merely expresses how many pixels fit along the X axis. A larger PPI figure is better than a small one. And conversely, a lower XY resolution is better than a high one. And if maths isn't your thing and you need to calculate these numbers, I've added a dedicated page to my website that will do it all for you. And if you use it, please consider a small donation. Even a little helps a lot. Now, just as you're feeling fairly confident, there's a third axis to consider, the vertical Z axis. Now, I'm British and I pronounce this letter Z normally, but for 3D printing, I found it more helpful to adopt the vernacular Z. Pretty much the entire printing industry doesn't want us to think about Z measurements, and as such, it's not covered in the PPI, the XY resolution, or in K-valued screen resolution. And the reason behind this is largely the technology. Vertical movement tends to be controlled by a screw thread and is governed by a stepper motor. And whilst these are pretty good, as they are reasonably inexpensive mechanical devices, they are limited to printing a layer height thickness of around 10 microns, or 0.01 millimeters. And as such, the industry pretty much wants us to print at 50 microns, or 0.05 millimeters, which is still pretty damn thin when you think of it as 1 20th of a millimeter. Now, you will usually find this information amongst the specs of most printers, but because it's fairly limited by technology right now, no one really makes a big fuss about it. The Z layer height can in fact make a big difference when printing, as reducing this can lessen the number of visible layer lines, especially in smaller prints. And for this reason, we'll be covering the topic of layer heights in another video. But right now, pretty much all the manufacturers have the same restrictions placed upon them in terms of Z height. 
and as such, it seems XY measurements are pretty much the industry focus, with smaller micron values meaning finer quality print. There are other factors at play when it comes to perfect printing, like model angle, support positions, resin choice and temperature, and more things than we can shake a stick-shaped print at. And, of course, just because you now know how to assess which printer should print more finely, it doesn't mean that you should rush out and buy the best spec printer available. Genuinely, it might not be suited to your needs. And for that reason, in the next video, we'll be asking which printer should you buy? So until next time, thanks for watching and happy printing.